you do a lot of things in 2D, you do a lot of stop motion, and then you do things that look like it's 3D. Is it created in a 3D program? Now, for the most part, um, I make little models and things uh, in the real world, and then I photograph them and then bring that into Photoshop. Mm -hmm. and then sometimes in Photoshop, by using the shadows and stuff, I make it even more 3D. Or, and then um, when I bring that stuff into After Effects for animation, then that is like it's a 3D world, with, but like flat, you know, plane <laughs> in a 3D world. So right. oftentimes it would be like a sculpture that a photograph that has like shadows and stuff on the side of it and highlights and whatnot. <laughs> so it is like a photo of a 3D thing. And then um, you bring it in After Effects and put it into a 3D world. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so kind of a little of both. <laughs> Now, I know that you teach, uh, you do a lot of visiting artist stuff. I know you've been teaching for quite a while after you graduated. Um, and you have your own company now. Have you ever worked for a large company? Yeah, not, not really. Um, the, um, you know, when I was teaching out of grad school, after when I finished grad school, I took a teaching job. And that was a, kind of a real job. You know, it was like a tenure track position. Um, yeah. And, uh... Yeah, no, but since then it's just been, I quit that job and then moved to New York to freelance and be self-employed and <laughs> been fortunate to um, stay pretty busy all these years. Yeah, illustration, a lot of times the reason why you get the call in the first place is because it's something that cannot be photographed. Yeah. And um, unless it's like a, you know, book cover, or like romance novel or something <laughs> like that, for the most part, you know, you kind of get the gig because it's a conceptual story and you just cannot photograph it. And mm. So I think it's always felt like it's really it's really beneficial to have some good ideas and um, yeah. rather than only have it look good, you know, if you can do both, you're going to have a much more successful career, I believe. Yeah. And have more fun and not get, not get burned out so quickly. <laughs> right. You know, like if you, yeah, I mean, if you're only doing stuff that's just like style-based alone, um, yeah. yeah, after a few years, you know, it gets you start to kind of, question it a little bit and it's just I don't know it didn't, for me it didn't feel as good so yeah um, yeah so and my friend that I mentioned Brian Stoffer like he is just a master it's really good idea develop your way of visual problem solving develop your method mm -hmm. and it becomes easier the longer that you yeah um, I do and I know that Brian does as well my friend Brian yeah. um, is will read the story and then maybe like underline keywords or write them down and then maybe uh, try and find other words, see how these words are related to other words that are in the story and maybe just start to, you just kind of see where it goes. Maybe even look in the dictionary of what some of these things mean and that might lead you somewhere. Yeah. And then um, start to find connections between them and, you know, and then the next thing you know, you have like this really, you know, kind of a cool idea. Yeah. So it's, it's there's a method to it, you know, it's not just like, all these things out of your brain it's you definitely there's like kind of a working process to figuring out what kind of image you can make for a first spring i feel like illustration is really changing a lot right now just editorial illustration in general has really changed a lot in the last couple of years a lot of magazines have just gone away yeah um, a lot more things are going back with the recession yeah and then everybody was kind of holding their breath to see what happened when the ipad came out and see how that might affect our industry and stuff, but hmm. like editorial illustration is taking a real head, you know, and there's some not, the jobs are not nearly as plentiful as they used to be. Um, yeah. but however, I think that that stuff is all changing. Like, I think all those, everything is just going to be, it's just changing up. It's just maybe not going to be as much editorial illustration, but there will be other venues uh -huh. to, you know, have your creative voice. And I think that if you can combine, I believe, like, things that move, things are going to want to move more and more. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it's like simple illustration that has some simple movement to it, like if you're reading an article online or an article on the iPad or whatever, like mm -hmm. why would you be stuck to just a still image if it's you know could have some kind of simple movement to it or maybe it's a simple move simple yeah maybe it's an illustration that you tap on and then it kind of morphs into something else um and then that that kind of makes me wonder like well but is there going to be like enough budget and time to be doing some of these things mm -hmm. whatever but I just think. You can start to really make stuff move and bring your style and all that to the to that and just kind of bring them all together. It's gonna be 
good, and I think and it's a little bit kind of like the Wild West right now. So yeah. I think it's just really good to embrace the technology, embrace some of these changes, and kind of find your own way. I think that's the kind of the mindset that would be good to, good to be in yeah. in this um, landscape now of that kind of entrepreneurial, you know, kind of thinking. Of, and it, it's kind of a combination of being an entrepreneur and just always also just being extremely excited about what you're into and just <laughs> kind of like to build it and they will come, you know, just make some really cool things. <laughs> yeah. Somehow it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. You know? Don't wait for the, all these assignments, whatever. Just start making stuff, you know, just yeah. really follow your instincts. It's the things that really excite you. If you make a piece and you're really excited about it, yeah. without pause, make five more, you know, make five brothers and sisters to it because you don't want to always be like reinventing the wheel you know right. if you make something that's really cool and then maybe you, you utilize some technique or some kind of look or some idea uh-huh. and if it came out really strong just hey just do a bunch more you know don't wait for somebody to tell you to do it or ask you to do it just do it yeah and then you're going to build up your body of work a lot faster and then um like for to be a freelance illustrator um the basic the basic equation to that has always been like you just do you you build put together a really solid body of work and then mm-hmm. you get you know put that into a portfolio and or website and then you promote it you get it in front of people and mm-hmm. then, you know and then ideally they call you and you can get a job and um and then just do good work you know and not really that much more complicated <laughs> but you can do to, to um increase your chances of them calling you back again would be to deliver the project a little bit early and they may say hey can we run some of these as like spot illustrations and pay you a little bit more that's kind of what I mean about like you just like over deliver you know get really excited about it just, yeah you know really, really get into it yeah and say I always say this and I'll say it when I'm speaking to these students in Florida like if you are if you don't have a lot of confidence or you're shy or something like that, you gotta get over it and yep. you have to fake it. You gotta learn how to fake it and you have to um don't apologize for your work when you're showing it. You have to be excited about it and and yeah. if you're nervous and afraid you gotta you gotta do something to get around that because that ain't gonna work. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So um, learn how to fake it and um, <laughs> or if you need to, because it's weird, you know. I I talk quite a bit in New York and I'll run into students on the street or in the subway like two years after they graduate and I ask them, how's it going? And, oh, I'm still putting my portfolio together and it's basically it's just they're afraid to really put their work out there even though it's really great and they're really right. strong work and you, you have to, um, your portfolio is never going to be done. It's always going to be evolving. So yeah. you are, uh, you gotta, you know, and then once you're done with you're going to have to give yourself some deadlines and some projects and stick to them and follow through because you're not going to have anybody to at your heels to get the help from almost stuff done. Continue to keep kind of pushing forward to find your own voice, you know, and just don't let your work be too um, derivative of other people. Okay. You know, just kind of keep pushing to find your own thing, you know, your, yeah. your, your style and just keep experimenting and see what you, see what you just Fantastic. Well, Richard, thank you so much for talking to me. This has been great. <laughs> no, good. I'm really, really happy to help, and I really appreciate you um, taking the interest in my work. So, um, whatever you can, send me a link. I'd love to see what you're doing. Okay, sounds great. Thank you, Richard. Cool. Good luck. All right. Bye. Bye.